Welcome back to another video guys. So what seems like a lifetime ago that I was down the farm tinkering with the 86, I now have a new little project. So let me show you what I've bought. So this is a 1986 Honda Vision NE50. Little bit random, I know. But uh, as of very recently, I've been doing a little bit of research on these little Bozo scooters. And uh, a friend of mine and a group of his friends all have these little scooters and have modified them for the sort of Jap spec, which I really actually like. Now what's great here in the UK is that with a full UK driving licence, with one CBT, which is basic training, you can actually ride under a 50cc without any L plates. So that's what I'm going to do. It's going to be a brilliant little commuter, but also a really good little project for me, but also for the channel. And I love just to do little odd things. Um, the 86 has always been a big focus for quite a few years as well as if you can just see it just in there the restoration of the uh, the rally burner which I did about a year ago so yeah this is this is the latest project so when I say project I mean project it's been dropped a few times I mean it is a 38 year old scooter but this can all be repaired with a bit of uh, fiberglass but all of this is going to be repainted and uh, yeah, fully restored as well as, uh, as I mentioned, a lot of modifications. So, so far, um, a friend of mine, Benny, who has one of these, and I'll, I'll see if I can put a picture of his up here. He's been amazing at sourcing me some bits and pieces from the Japanese auctions to get this to the spec that I'm hoping to get it to. So, yeah, just really, really excited to get stuck into it. It's such a cool little thing. So it hasn't been ran in quite some time. Um, I do need to empty the tank if there is any residual fuel. Uh, have a look at the carburetor. Check to make sure it's got some oil in it because it is a two-stroke. But uh, yeah, I've fitted already a new battery because it was completely dead. And I have started stripping a couple of bits and pieces. But uh, yeah. Let's just start cracking on with it. Okay, so you can see it hasn't, uh, hasn't been cleaned under here probably ever. A little bit of oil here and there, but uh, otherwise, it's actually really clean so yeah I'm gonna start stripping as much as I can because I'm gonna do a full nut and bolt on this uh, I want to try and get to the frame to see the condition get that painted give all this a bit of a clean we're obviously over the years filled up with oil and just uh, yeah just spilt a bit otherwise all looks in pretty good condition all the hoses are in pretty good nick they've gone a little bit stiff but all of these will be replaced just stripped off the cover off the airbox and I'm going to remove this and uh, yeah get the carb off make sure that it's all nice and clean and get some yeah fresh fuel and fingers crossed if we have spark it should start Okay, so, so far, strip down is easy enough. A few screws and a couple of bolts. A new looking horn, so someone's definitely been in here before. And there were a couple of random screws, so uh, yeah. 
a bit more of a repair here to do but the front is missing a piece anyway so that's going to be a bit of fiberglass uh, so yeah just got a couple of screws and bits and pieces to remove and then this can come off okay guys so after around about an hour this is what we have so far so with regard to the front mud guard as far as i'm aware you have to strip the forks for that to come off so that's staying for now um i have checked the tank there is zero fuel in there um i took this little reg off here and literally bone dry but i'm going to give this a flush through and then put some clean fuel in it don't know if you can just see there there is oil already in the tank i have got some new stuff to go in but to get it running i'll use that so yeah check for spark clean out the carb i've got to remove this i'm going to do that tomorrow um but yeah fingers crossed just a little bit of work and it will run yeah i actually bought my first moped when i was 15. um i worked at a motorcycle shop locally and my boss had a second hand suzuki katana and uh the bearings had had it and i remember stripping the engine apart with my elder brother danny and uh yeah it was really good fun i learned a lot and i think that's where i got my passion for anything mechanical so if any of you are interested in you know having a go at anything mechanical especially like this scooters are perfect so simple to strip apart really not that many parts to get it to run so definitely recommend having a go you got spark guys that's good right now to check the carb Well, that's not ideal. You can see where the fuel has gone. It's gone green. Must have been sat. See if there's anything in the bowl. Oh wow. Yeah, safe to say that's gone off. So, remove the bowl. Float looks pretty clean, operates lovely. Bit of build up on there as you can see. It's not clean, even the jet is filthy. So I'll be removing that. The bowl itself is filthy. I mean, that is its pretty shocking, to be fair. So I've got some carb cleaner. I'm going to try my best to get rid of all the residue that's remaining. And also, I'm going to leave it in my ultrasonic tank for maybe 10 minutes with the degreaser that I have in there. And hopefully that should uh, clean up the exterior also. But yeah. Admittedly, I wasn't expecting it to be quite that dirty. So once that's done, I'll put it back on the bike. And fingers crossed, with some fresh fuel, it should start. Okay guys, so, after a very good clean, it's actually come out really nice. Almost looks brand new. So yeah, really happy with that. This is the bowl. Which, if you remember, looked like it had moss growing in it. It's uh, it's come out really nice. Everything looks free of dirt. I've checked all the jets, etc. So hopefully it's all good. So I'm going to put this back together. Put it back on the bike. I have some fresh fuel. Fingers crossed. It starts. Just put a little bit in for now, just to get it running. Okay, so that is fuel in. Battery is now attached again. I don't seem to have any leaks, which is good. So let's just do it. 
Let's give it a go. Let's see if it starts. It starts. All right, admittedly, it cut out. It needs a little bit of tinkering. That's probably the carburetor where I've had it apart. But doesn't that sound sweet? How good does that sound? That sounds so sweet. What was that? Three, four kicks and then it started? And apparently it hasn't been ran in a long time. Now I've put E5 fuel in, which is, because it's an old bike, I assume that was the fuel that's probably best for it. And it's actually V power, so I haven't scrimped out. Not that that's probably going to make a difference, I don't know. But either way, how easy did that start? I'm not even kidding you. She ticks over. Just a little adjustment on that screw, on the idle screw. Japanese reliability. Right. Now I know it runs, I can strip the rest of it. Okay, so the fuel tank. I've emptied it of all fuel. I'm going to prep this now um, and paint it, ready to go back on the bike once we start rebuilding it. What I have noticed is this label here states the model of the bike and also the colour code. I would like to retain this, so I'm going to mask this up. Um, this one here, which says unleaded fuel only, I'm going to remove and hopefully have this remade or have one similar put back on. But otherwise it's pretty much just surface rust, so I'm going to clean this up as best I can. Paint it in black once again and put it to one side and then move on to the next bit. Okay, so as you can see with the sender, a little bit of corrosion. It does operate correctly, but I'll clean this up as best I can. And hopefully it works okay. Right guys, so after about an hour of going over this with my drill and a little brass brush, this is what I've got. And it's actually surprisingly in really good condition. There's next to no rust on it. So the surface rust that was on there just came off really easy. The metal itself is in really good condition. Just gonna finish off getting the paint off around this label and I'm gonna mask that up as I've mentioned and just clean all inside here. But yeah, really, really nice condition. So that should come out really good. All right then guys, so a couple of hours have gone by and to be fair, I've achieved a lot. So the bike is now completely stripped. I've taken all the wiring loom off, uh, the brake cables, the speedo cable. I've managed to separate the uh, front forks, which means I could then take the front mudguard off. Uh, so yeah, let me show you what I've got left. So I've got bits and pieces literally everywhere. Speedo, airbox, exhaust. Uh, some lights, all the cables. Um, I've got the uh, fan shroud off the uh, off the engine, 
all these plastics I've managed to clean up. This rear mudguard slash uh, rear light sort of number plate holder was thick. And I assume it is 38 years worth of mud and God knows what. It took me hours to get it off. But it's come out so incredibly clean. So these are ready to go back on as and when I rebuild the, uh, the bike. The headlight, I'm going to tint uh, a yellow to match the, uh, the 86. Here we have the front wheel and rear wheel slash engine. So this is going to make it a lot easier to work on and I'll put it up on my desk. The rear suspension, which I will uh, modify, which I'll, I'll talk about. These are the front forks. I'm yet to dismantle these bits and pieces. All these will be blasted and prepped and painted, so they'll look mint. The front suspension, again, is going to be modified, so the scooter is going to be lowered. That's all the wiring loom, etc. I'm going to clean all that up, give it a good uh, look over, replace anything that looks a little bit dodgy. But so far, it looks good. Here is the main frame. And I'm actually surprised at the condition of it. It is amazing condition. All this is just surface rust, which is not an issue whatsoever. I can clean that up really easy. And what's nice is I thought it was a black frame, but it's like a metallic gunmetal grey, which I really like. Now, whether I paint it this colour again, I'm not sure. It might just be easier to do it in the, uh, in the black paint, which I've painted the fuel tank in. And speaking of fuel tank... This is how it has come out, which I am so chuffed with. Considering the condition of it previously, I've managed to retain the original label, as I mentioned. Masked it off. This is still drying. Giving the uh, fuel cap a little lick of paint to make that look a bit prettier. The front mudguard needs a good clean. Needs a bit of a repair at the front, but it's not an issue. A couple of holes there to fill in. And there is the handlebars. So this is where the fun begins, clean up the frame, get this prepped and painted, as well as the forks, and then uh, order uh, the engine bits, which I'm going to order for it, and uh, yeah, start cleaning that up. Okay guys, so as I mentioned, modifications. The idea that I have for this scooter isn't to just restore it back to its original spec, I want it as clean as possible, like all my projects. So this is why I'm going to the extent that I am, to strip it and to make it as clean as possible. But the whole idea of this project is to produce a Bozo scooter. Now, a friend of mine, Benny, and a group of, uh, of gentlemen in the UK have these scooters and each and every single one of them is individual. And I love them. They're lowered, they have spoilers, lower belly cowls, amazing graphics they just look incredible they're just great fun and i want to get involved in this so it took me a little while to find this scooter but i'm so glad that i've managed to find one so that's the plan so these videos hopefully will be getting more interesting for you it's not just going to be about me stripping and cleaning parts i've got um, a body kit coming for it as i said i'm going to lower it which i'll show you how i do that and try and get as much power as possible so it's going to be quite a nippy little skewer, hopefully. So if that sounds like your thing, please consider subscribing to the channel. And I really hope to catch you in the next one.